Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. We're finally going to discuss the Les Paul CM. I've had so many requests for this one, but why is that? Well, it's basically because it's a really affordable one pickup Les Paul. However, some additional key features about this is it's actually thin bodied, but still has a maple top to it that's carved. So it's just kind of an interesting, unique guitar that fits the bill for people who are looking for those magical one pickup guitars. Because I've kind of been an advocate of those with some of the videos I've made. Personally for me, I prefer it when it's a single P90 over a humbucker, but these guitars are still fun in their own right. So when we're talking affordable, how much were these things brand new in 2015? At launch, these were introduced at $699, but it didn't take long for a price cut to about $600 to happen. So basically, throughout the life cycle of this guitar, the price just kept going down. Most people bought them around the $450 price cut, and then they actually went as cheap as $360 at the very end. Today, though, the used market, you're going to pay around $450 for one of these, plus or minus $100, depending if you're getting a deal or if you're buying from a dealer. And these things kind of have their own cult following going on. But what a lot of people don't realize is there's actually at least four CM models out there. There was the original 2015 year, like this one, that's just called the Les Paul CM. The easiest way to know that you have one of these is they came stock with the G-Force tuning system. Yep, we've got the robo tuners on this thing. Whether you like it or not, it's pretty easy to swap them out. But then in 2016, they revamped these and pretty much the only thing that I can see that they changed is they put regular Klusen tuners on here. They gave the humbucker a four conductor lead versus the old two style and renamed it the CMT. But also for 2016, they introduced a higher end version of the CM in both a Les Paul and SG body style format. These were a little different though because they did not have the maple top. They just made it out of all mahogany, but they still retained the maple neck. But take a look at what else has changed. You still have the master volume, master tone controls, but now you have these cool looking knobs. You also have the new three-way toggle switch because you now have two dirty fingers pickups in here. Notice the red lettering. The fretboard is now rich light and has no inlays, red side marker dots. And take a look at this headstock, wow. That, that's interesting. You get a red Gibson logo with the Gibson custom emblem outlined in red. And to top it all off, you have a Floyd Rose FRX system on it. But if humbucker guitars aren't your thing, these actually replaced a model from 2014 called the Melody Maker. I've actually documented pretty much one of every single color, I think except for wine red. And I do like those guitars. But what they've got going for them are two P90S pickups. They're not, you know, traditional P90s. It sounds more Stratocaster-like. It's a really twangy guitar. But they're a lot of fun because they operate on a very similar body style. But if you like having two pickup options, those are something you can do. A lot of people like to put mini humbuckers in those guys. So you could make those an honorary fifth CM Les Paul if you wanted to. But is that all I can really tell you about the Les Paul CM? It's just kind of a budget friendly guitar that's a lot of fun to play. No, there's actually a little bit of controversy behind this model. What on earth does CM mean? Now we actually already asked this question once before when I reviewed a model from the 80s called the Gibson Victory. Does it stand for carved maple? Cause hey, we've got a carved maple top on this buddy, don't we? No, apparently it stands for chick magnet. <laughs> I'm not sure if it was an inside joke or what was going on there, but you can find these advertised by official dealers as chick magnets. I swear I've seen a box sticker also say that before. I'll have to see if I can find that photo. But there's stories of people calling up Gibson and they deny that. So for nearly five years now, that was just kind of the accepted answer, chick magnet. But five months ago, a new story came out about the CM. Please keep in mind, I'm sharing this story just simply as the novelty effect of it. I can neither confirm nor deny it, but the evidence does look pretty good. So if this guy faked this story, he did a pretty good job. So apparently there's a band called The Dopamines. And in 2012, they were on tour and their guitarist hurt his hand playing his faded Les Paul studio. Now, how did he hurt his hand? He took the neck pickup out and while he was playing, it got jammed in between where the neck pickup was and he injured himself pretty badly. So as the tour was ending and he was going back home, he had a bunch of time. So he jokingly looked up Henry Jeskowitz's email and he sent him a joke email saying that it was his fault that his hand got hurt because of his guitar. 
And to make up for it, he could create a full-bodied Les Paul, but without a neck pickup, so this would never happen again. The story goes, after the initial chuckles, they just kind of forgot that they ever sent that joke email because they never heard from the guy. But then, flash forward to 2014. He had put his contact information on that last email, and he actually got a call from Henry himself. He essentially said, ha, what a funny joke. I hope your hand healed and was better, but let's look into designing a model with you. So after the phone call, he followed up with him on an email and wanted to know what specs he would prefer. So what this guy said is he wanted something very similar to his beloved faded studio. He wanted it in black with one pickup and he wanted it to be affordable. He wanted to go to the store, pick one out and just be able to gig with it. And Gibson's CEO seemed to like the idea. So he asked him to name it. And the guitarist's initial response was Chucker Mod. But Henry quickly shut that idea down because he said it was a stupid name. So they decided to shorten it to CM. So does CM actually stand for the Chucker model? Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> it kind of seems to be that way if this guy's story holds true, because it was less than one year later in 2015 that the Les Paul CM officially came out. Now, as part of helping Gibson design this, Henry promised him that he would send him one of these. Unfortunately, that guitar never came. And why did this story only surface five months ago? because he finally got his guitar in July of 2019. So does the CM actually originally stand for Chucker Mod? I don't know, but it's a fun little story that serviced about these. But to learn a little bit more about the specs of this guitar, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench and take a look at its individual parts. Inside the Les Paul CM, we don't really have too much to go over here. Once again, no neck pickup, and you only have one bridge pickup here, and it is the Lead 61 humbucker. But you can see it has the patent applied 4 decal on there, and it's a zebra bobbin. But inside the pickup cavity, you can see the mahogany body and the maple top. It is a full width maple top, and it reads SELPCM15. The bridge is a lightning bar wraparound tailpiece. You intonate it by using these little things. You just kind of rock it back and forth. If you like 100% perfection, yeah, you might not like these guitars, but if you like close enough, they usually do you good. And as far as the controls go, it's just a single master volume and a master tone. But check out the ridiculous lead length on this pickup. Jeez, you could install it all the way up here. <laughs> Usually they cut those down a little bit more, so that'd be good if you need to reuse this pickup and something else is like a neck pickup. And here you can see the pickup ring's actually curving a little bit. Sometimes that's because of over-tightening. But just as a forewarning, that usually means it's eventually going to crack, but you don't technically need the top parts of a pickup ring. They're just there for cosmetic reasons. And that single pickup reads 7.85k ohms. As far as the body goes, it is a two-piece maple top, as we saw within the pickup cavity. It is a full-width top. And that's why some people really like these things, is they still kind of have that top carve to them. But they're a thinner Les Paul, they're lighter weight, and they're just simple rock machines. But here you can see that two-piece center seam. And you just have a very thin black finish on this that's satin. If you would prefer it to be super shiny, if you take some polish and really go to town, you can turn this into a full gloss finish. But once we get to the neck, it's a traditional rosewood fretboard. However, it's actually thicker than it would traditionally be on this model. I wouldn't have even recognized it had I not read the spec sheet. As far as neck specs go, we get 1.67 inches at the nut. That increases to 2.06 by the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.86. That increases to 0.98 by the 12th. So it's a nice rounded neck profile. It starts off a little bit thin, but comfortable, but you get a little bit of beef right here, but I would still classify this as a 60s neck, despite what the measurements might make you think. But the truss rod cover is just a plain black plastic and it reads CM on it. It's not a silk screen, it just appears to be a flat part of the plastic. But there's your truss rod if you need to adjust it. And you just have that flat satin finish on the headstock here as well. Les Paul model. Gibson in the gold silk screen, and it's going for the 24 and 3 quarters inch scale length. Moving on to the back side of the guitar, not too much going on here either. It's just a flat mahogany back, and you got a little bit of a belly carve right there, but I was really surprised to see hand-wired electronics in here. I thought for sure I was going to open this up and see a PCB inside here. 
But what's kind of nice about this being a full route is A, we can see the mahogany body right here, and then you can also see the maple top exposed. But if you wanted to modify this to have something else in here, like you could even put like a wah circuit or something in here, kind of like the Sully Erna Les Paul. But they are two Gibson branded pots. You got that tiny little cap on there and it reads CM15 under there. And it looks like it says RC4. And just as some fun information, in case you want to swap out your pickup, that's what this is right here. You just unsolder that and that and then put your new one in right there. And the back plate actually has shielding built into it. So if you ever see one that has this textured material to it, that's why it looks goofy. But moving on to the side, you do have a plastic output jack. It's kind of rectangular and you have the large style strap buttons. Basically what these are trying to do is eliminate the need for actual strap locks. They're pretty good, not quite as secure as strap locks, but you know, if you don't wanna to have to have separate straps for every guitar, these can prove helpful. And condition wise, it looks like there's a uh, slight impression right here on this guitar. But moving on to the neck here, it's a maple neck. I personally like that because I love the 70s era when they did the maple necks and they also made this finish slightly transparent right here so you can actually see that maple wood grain and some light figuring here. I mean nothing too crazy or anything. But at the top of the headstock you could see where they spray it in a non-translucent finish. It's kind of interesting. These came stock in 2015 with the Gibson G4 system. If you got a 2016 one you got regular tuners. Essentially all you need to know for these guys is to turn it on. You just press that button after you've charged the battery, then you strum the strings, and it just automatically tunes it for you. And the other thing you're gonna wanna know if you're buying this, to change the strings, you're gonna wanna press this three times, one, two, three, then the enter button twice, one, two. And this enters you into a mode where you have each of these strings and you press down and it detunes it. And then just look up that YouTube video that shows you how to do it as far as putting the string on the thing. But that'll serve as a guide just in case you need to look inside the guitar. But if you hate this thing, you just want regular tuners, it is really easy to take off. All you have to do is loosen off those strings and then put a screwdriver in right here, untighten it, take those off, then use your little wrench here just to unscrew them and then put regular tuners on there. And here you can see your serial number. Under here, I do believe it will say 2015 model made in USA. And if you are interested in this guitar and you want me just to take that off to have tuners be ready to be installed, I'll happily do that for you. Heck, you can actually send me tuners and I'll install them for you. The only thing I won't do is I won't drill the pilot holes for the screws because I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> and this example weighs seven pounds, half an ounce. So let's go ahead and hear how this one sounds. to go over it's just one pickup so it sounds like this with everything full on <laughs> this volume pot cuts off like after seven so watch as I turn it down
seven. It's already at like half power, so it doesn't really do you much good to try to dial in a neck pickup sound on a clean position. It pretty much just shuts off around three. Now we'll try it with some distortion. <laughs> rather nicely. Personally, if I was going to gig with this guitar, that's probably how I would just leave it. On the distorted channel, but rolled down for my cleans. the Les Paul CM, what are my final thoughts on this thing? I'm not as crazy about it as other people are. It's not the best single pickup guitar I've ever had, but I can understand why people like these because they're incredibly affordable and a lot of fun. And while I wasn't initially impressed by this guitar, while editing this episode, I thought it sounded really good once it was recorded. So in my opinion, that saves this guitar. It's a great rock and roll machine, and I would suggest them to somebody. The modding potential is just infinite on these guitars. You don't have to feel bad about beating them up. You don't have to feel bad about swapping parts out, changing them. I know a lot of people will swap these out for like the baby grand bridges so you can have intonation for all of the strings. I'd personally upgrade the electronics to maybe have a coil split or something like that so you'd have to swap the pickup out. I think it'd be a lot of fun to turn this one into like a mini gold top like the one I had, the Kazuyoshi Saito. Just have to do some wood filler, put a P90 pickup in, refinish the top in gold, then you got a tiny little gold top. As far as the robo tuners go, I, it's okay. I'm not a big fan of them. I would rather just have traditional tuners because it's just a little bit easier. So that's going to wrap it up for my CM review. If you're interested in being the next owner of this one, I'm going to go ahead and briefly go over the condition. I got this one as part of a trade. It was one of the blowout models and he did a lot of setup work to this. Like he worked on the fret sprout and gave it a nice setup. So I didn't really want to touch this guitar too much because it is set up pretty well, but you might want to set it up to your own preferences too. But as it comes out of the box, I think you'll be pretty happy. But face of the headstock, it just has some very minor scratches. As far as the frets go, you have very minor wear, nothing too crazy. I would suggest just swap into some regular tuners on here. But it held tune well enough, but it definitely wasn't perfect. I had to keep, you know, retuning it. As far as the face of the guitar goes, I mean, no major gouges or anything that I saw. Everything's looking pretty good up here. Back of the headstock is also looking good. The battery is inside here, so if you need to take that out and put it back in, you just press it like that. Then don't be alarmed by these lines at the edge of the headstock. That's just the headstock wings. They're not separating or anything. You can just kind of see them. And the back of the neck is in pretty good shape here too. I mean, pretty much the only thing wrong with this guitar is there's like a very minor impression right here from like a, a belt buckle or a rivet from somebody's jeans. Other than that, I mean, it's just maybe some light picking scratches or a small ding here or there. But if you're looking for a clean Les Paul CM, I think you'll be pretty happy with this one. Blacklight time. Under blacklight, it doesn't glow too much. It's a very thin satin finish, but you can see it glows a little bit. 
hasn't been in the sun too much. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of been stuck in a warehouse its whole life for the most part. It was one of the new old stock models. But unfortunately, I think all those are sold out. So I think these will just continue to keep raising in value around that $500 mark. I mean, anything higher than that, most people would rather just go for a studio. But if you like a lightweight Les Paul, that's kind of what the niche market that these things work for. If you're interested in being the next owner of this one, it comes in its original Gibson USA gig bag. That's also something that kind of helped keep these things cheap. They didn't come with a proper case. But inside here, you will find your tuner charger. It also has some of the other adapters just in case this thing's being sent overseas. I guess if you want to pay the shipping, it can now. But you've got some of the other paperwork in here as well as the truss rod tool. And the interior is a nice white color and plush. As far as the condition goes, I see some scuffs right here from the tuner bits in it and everything else is looking pretty good. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this Gibson Les Paul CM from 2015, you can check out that link in the description, which will take you to the Reverb for Sale page. Thank you Troglodyte Ice for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.